or at Jeff Ashley's meeting, but I'm going to make that really short. Um, we are recording and Daniel just started recording. I don't know if y'all have met Daniel Faraby. I think some of you all have, but he's our, uh, our program support specialist. And so he's joining me today to help run breakout rooms. If we do breakout rooms, we may rethink that with this small group now. Um, but uh, anyway, um, we're gonna just talk about applying those concepts that we heard from Jeff Ashley about planned giving. And so um, I will share my screen and um, we will, it's two, okay. So, so that's what we're talking about today is applying these concepts um, of planned giving that Jeff Ashley shared um, around donor development. And so, um, so what we're going to try to get through today is to just kind of touch base very lightly on some of those concepts that Jeff Ashley had shared, and then to get some practice in on using those concepts and leave with a plan to talk to at least one donor. And because I know we do have a small group here today, I think we will also talk about um, a plan for how to take this back to your board. Um, and because I think that you can have the same conversation that we're going to have today with your board um, and you can even play this video for them if you want to or have them watch this video so. Um, so that's what we're going to do and so real quickly some of the concepts that Jeff Ashley shared he had done a lot of study around Kentucky nonprofits themselves and some of the trends that are happening around fundraising. And he was saying special event revenue, corporate grant sponsorships had experienced a decline in 2020 and that they were expected to continue declining in 2021. So while you know your foundation may still have those special events and things, you may not be making as much revenue off of those. Um, foundation grants have remained steady. So that was something that's remained steady even as priorities shifted to COVID. And he said it was pretty much not known what's going to happen in 2021 with foundation funding as they, as the, I think philanthropists are probably also trying to continue figuring out where they're going to continue funding and what, what that funding needs to look like in our quote unquote new world. But the point that came out that was most important is that individual giving remained a steady source of, of income in 2020. And in fact, I think he said in some cases, that giving increased as people reached out to address COVID issues. And then he said, this is an area that is actually anticipated to grow in 2021. And so then he talked about what is it that we need to be thinking about with our um, plan, with our giving and donors in general, actually. And that was that we need to focus on miss mission messaging, which is what Jerry refers to as money for what. Um, and that people need a compelling personal reason to give. So they're looking for an opportunity to make a difference. And obviously those two are pretty connected. So you've got your mission, you're telling them money for what, and they're saying, oh, I can connect to that and give money to it. And then he shared a list of things that work with donors. And so as we're going through some of these things, I would recommend, I, I would like for you all to think about anybody, and, you, and later on we're going to talk about this, but we don't have to necessarily share the names of individuals, but be thinking about specific donors that you might work with, um, that you're aware of, that have given to your foundation, or people, maybe people who have not given to your foundation. So anyway, so what works to connect with donors? Um, he said it, it, if they have a relationship with the organization, the donors want to feel really engaged, that um, it helps sometimes if they feel like you're giving them a little bit of inside information. Now, I don't think he meant to share something that's confidential, but if they, if they are learning something special about the difference they can make. So, for example, a lot of the community foundations have gone through a strategic planning process, and you could share with that person, you know, we're just starting to look into this, but we want to fund in this particular area, and I know you have an interest in that. And so, and not everybody knows that yet because we haven't released this to the public, but you know that's something that's not necessarily confidential as long as the decision is made by your board that that's the direction you want to go. But we're going to be raising money around this and we thought you'd be interested in knowing that so that's kind of some inside information maybe. Um, and then using story he talked about using story as a way to connect to donors, so we all understand the power of story and good storytelling, I think. And then he talked about how always circling back to them and their impact is very important. And he used a term called transformational giving so that to replace the term planned giving when working with them. And so we might keep that in mind as circling back to the impact that they have as being transformational and long-term. And then 
that he shared the channels, multiple channels of communication for people, um, email, text messages, meetings, one-to-one, -one, both live and Zoom, recorded video and live stream, and then handwritten letters. And so there, and there could be other ways that you all are, are um, communicating with your donors too, but those are some ways that he was saying to connect. And again, we're just hitting this with a light brush, so sorry, I'm going fast. But then he said, you know, you, okay, so we're doing donor development, but he said that planned giving must be part of the mix. Um, individual giving is 80% of philanthropy. He said only individuals make those planned gifts. You don't get those from foundations. You don't get those from special events. And so this is a ripe area for, for developing that kind of planned giving and transformational giving. He shared that a robust program focuses on eight to 10 donors. And so here's my proposal to the, to the affiliate boards is that if you have, you know, a dozen members or 10 members on your board, what if one person identified a donor who has been a regular donor or somebody, you know, that has been connected to your foundation for a period of time and you focus on having a conversation with that person. If each, found, if each foundation board member selected one person, you could have what he was calling a robust program. And then he said that he started, he was talking about keeping it simple. And he said that there are two what things that make up 80% of planned giving. And that is simple bequests. That is adding things, adding a, a foundation to the will and doing a gift of life insurance, either having that foundation be a beneficiary or the um, uh, providing them ownership of the policy in some way. And so that's 80% of planned giving. And so if our board members can learn to talk about those two things, then that could be a way to transition into planned giving. And then this was the concept. He said, don't forget, when you're talking about transformational giving, you don't make the decision for the donor. Don't say, oh, that person's never going to give. And he shared the story of a school teacher who gave those very small donations on a regular basis and then ended up leaving a substantial amount to a community foundation. So you always want to give the donor the opportunity to make their own giving decision. And then um, who are potential donors, those faithful donors like that school teacher that he talked about, uh, giving those small regular gifts, somebody that's connected that way, former board members, current board members, People in your community who have a specific interest or a passion in something that is a focus area for your foundation could, could be developed as a, as a potential donor. And then the idea of people who grew up there and moved away. And so there may be other folks that you all have in mind, and we'll talk about that, um, people that you could connect with um, that could be potential donors. Um, from what Jeff Ashley said, it seemed like, you know, when we're thinking about plan giving, we think we may have to go after the quote unquote big fish, but it sounds like actually that there are people who look like small everyday Joes, you know, small donors who could end up being a source for um, those foundation gifts. So here's what um, I would like for us to do individually as part of this webinar. And then these are the things that I think we can take back to your board members and have them think about as well. And so first of all, if each of you will think of a specific donor to your community foundation, especially if it's somebody that you have a relationship with that you think you could have a conversation with. So I'm gonna give you a minute to think about a name or two that you might jot down. Um, and y'all could give me the thumbs up or something to let me know that you Hey, does anybody need more time? All right. So can you, for that person, specifically write down two or three personal reasons that you think they give? Is, and for example, what are they passionate about in the community? Is there something specific that makes them interested in giving that you would be aware of? And you, I know we're kind of making some inferences and assumptions here, but it'll give us somewhere to start. 
I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Does anybody need more time for that? Okay. So beside one of your, uh, one or more of those personal reasons that you think they give, what is a connection to the work that your community foundation is doing? And, and um, Jeff Ashley talked about this in terms of why do they love you? Why do they, why do they wanna give to your work? And so can you articulate that? What is the connection? that you have or that, they, that their interest has. Anybody need more time for that one? Okay. Now, can you think of a compelling story that you can share with them about that connection? Like an actual story that would make them go, wow, that is amazing work that you're doing. Um, and I wanna give to it. Or is there some kind of inside information that you might share the way we described that earlier? Again, not something that's confidential, but so either a story or some inside information or both that if you had a conversation with this person, you would share with them. Is everybody thought has had a chance to think of a story? Does anybody need more time on that? Okay. And then, um, so we, you know, you, if you're thinking about this conversation and you've thought about their personal reasons that they give and you've thought of a compelling story, but you want to talk to them specifically about planned giving and you want to say, would you consider putting the foundation in your will or providing, let, allowing us to be a beneficiary in your life insurance policy or whatever. Um, or you might mention what Jeff Ashley talked about as a blended gift. You know, you could give to this today, but if you wanna to give to it in perpetuity, if you wanna to give to it long-term and be transformational, you could do both. So think about what, how might you ask 
or make that transition into talking about this kind of planned giving. And does anybody need more time for that? Okay. Well, what I had thought we would do when we had a larger group was to break into pairs and we can still do that. I'm gonna let you all make the choice. Would you all like to pair up and practice with each other? No. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing some those. Um, so let's just then have a conversation about this and um, share about your thoughts that you had about a, a donor. And again, you don't have to necessarily identify who that donor is. Just share with the group what you, you know, what you identified as their passions and connections and that kind of thing. So, and what thoughts you have about this process. And maybe even we can talk about how to take it back to the board, but we'll start with you sharing your thoughts. Sandy, you unmuted first. Okay. Well, so I was like, <laughs> Melissa and I always race to the unmute. And I thought, well, I'm going to hold back a little. And she had the exact same thought. I think that's, I think that's hysterical. So, that um, so anyhow, so I was thinking of a particular, because last year during Kentucky Gives, I did a, a challenge grant and I had a, a person come through with a big, well, what I considered a big donation, um, and, uh, and it was for the, because uh, I was specifically uh, asking for friends of the farmer's market, um, you know, and, uh, and so I was using that particular person as somebody to be able to, to go back to. Um, and so, and, and I'll, I will just be honest, where I get stuck is the story, okay? And the reason I get stuck with the story is because as the Upper Cumberland Community Foundation, we do not provide the direct services. We supply grants, okay? And so the only way that I can come up with a, a story short of going and calling up our grant folks, which is something that I hope our grant committee will start doing to capture some of these stories, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just to be able to say, listen, I know you through, you know, your obvious you know, belief in family, belief in community, supporting uh, and wanting to have relationships with, you know, uh, the, your clients, you know, all of these types of things that you would that you would be interested in because our organization has prioritized the most vulnerable, uh, the nonprofits that are helping the most vulnerable people in our community, mm -hmm. you know, and for example, you know, we have given out you know, grants to the summer reading program at the library. We've given out grants to the mentorship program for, you know, matching children with mentors. Um, and that, um, that, uh, that, I, that feels like a good match with your interest. And I wanted to just share that with you. And then in trying to transition, I just think it's always easier if you can start out Listen, Brian and I have made a decision and we have we have set up in our estate that we're going to leave a legacy gift to this community because we happen to believe that it can be transformational, uh, especially since it can be utilized for perpetuity. Um, and just wanted to know if that would be something that we could talk to you and your spouse uh, about at some time and share how that's possible and ways that could be done. Um, and, uh, and so that we can just continue to build upon our compassion for the most vulnerable in our community. 
that's as close as I got. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I had a similar struggle, but not from the fact that we only make grants, but that we have been um, passive in our grant making, and we have really kind of put the onus on the commit the community to come to us and say, mm -hmm. you know, we need something, and so because of that kind of method, not to say that recently through our strategic plan, thank you very much, Donna, that we have not started to kind of uh, rethink that and we've actually identified some causes that we wanna be a part of. But because it's been passive, I, I found it difficult in trying to think of the passion project mm -hmm. that we could really say that our foundation is done. You know, we really love this particular work or this, um, because again, it was like, okay, somebody asks us, uh, somebody asked us for money and we either said yes or no. So um, I think that I could not write anything down when Donna just asked that. However, with our new strategic plan and somewhat of a new direction, I feel like that six or eight months from now, we'll be able to say, you know, this is, this is our passion, not to say that we don't fund applications, but, you know, we found ourselves, you know, following these particular community passions. Um, a thing that jumped in my mind, and boy, oh, I may be off in the wrong direction, but in um, Mr. Ashley's presentation, like the school teacher as an example, he happened to mention that she did not have any children. Well, I started kind of thinking a moment ago, how many people that I just really had never thought about before who, who don't have children and who very well could be people who might be interested in some type of legacy gift. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, I really, I've got like one, uh, two, uh, three, four, five names um, that, and all of them, I think probably have some capacity for a legacy gift, you know, diff different amounts, obviously, but I just found that, I mean, those just were just what I rolled off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Now I might be up, you know, I might be in the wrong direction, just assuming that because somebody doesn't have children. And in fact, one two, three of those people are single. Yeah. So they are single and don't have children. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, you know? Um, so I think that that was just something I hadn't really pondered. And um, somebody may have already asked. <laughs> so it may be a moot point at, at this point, but I, I thought that, you know, those folks are engaged in the community. That's what I was thinking when I wrote yeah. down these names is these people are engaged. And so my pitch to them would be, yes, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing, going to do a legacy gift, but also that like, you know, you, you know, you're also involved and engaged in the community community. I know that you're passionate about this. I know that you want that you're interested and want to make a difference. And so, Hopefully by then I can say, and, you know, here are some of our passion projects, not to say we're limited to that, but, you know, this is the kind of work that we're passionate about. And we really think that, you know, your legacy gift could help us continue that work or even take it in a slightly different direction if they wanted to do something that was mm -hmm. more directed. Mm -hmm. But um, anyhow, I just hadn't really thought about how many folks that I knew that were, you know, potential folks that may not have anybody yet in mind to give their to give their estate to so mm -hmm. that was a little well, bit of an and, epiphany <laughs> and Melissa as a childless couple I mean that's one of the things because that's one of the things we can't you know Brian and I can't leave behind uh, an heir um, you know and uh, and so we think about it in that term so you know how can I how can I leave something that moves forward that's not through a child. Uh -huh. um, and I, I like to tell people the story of this uh, couple that uh, were childless in Corbin uh, and had you know, a multi-decade uh, successful business uh, in downtown Corbin and built all of their wealth 
uh, in that business with the support of Corbin people. And they passed away. They passed away with a will. And the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Association, all of these mm. wonderful national organizations but nothing got local. tons nothing. of money. And no. Corbin, where they made all that money, got zero. You know, right. and uh, right. and I don't and I don't think that was done. I don't think they had like you know. Oh, I don't like these people. It's been right. a big affair to just, make this money all this time. Just you know, it wasn't in a vehicle yet to do it. Just with, maybe exactly. one where. And yeah. those yeah. other places, those national organizations probably asked them multiple times Could for be. donations. If they got, you know, if they were a, if they were a small donor at some point, you know, the ask was coming over uh -huh. and over from those national organizations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, Kathy. I think it I kind of never know. quits. Uh, I mean, I mm -hmm. gave 30 years ago to the Multiple yep. Sclerosis Foundation, and I still receive at least three uh, pieces of uh, document or uh, junk mail you know, well, it's not junk, but still, yeah, you know, right, right. But you know, you call it junk mail. So think about how impersonal uh -huh. that mail feels. Yeah. yeah. But if you are able to have this, if you can designate those eight or 10 people that your board can work with, and you can really become personal with them, what the impact could be with that. Yep. I mean, some of these folks, you know, again, as I started jotting this name down, these names down, they are, are people that I really could have a conversation with. Now, there's a couple on the list because I wrote others down that, you know, there probably needs to be somebody else have that conversation. But um, yeah, I was a little surprised. And sometimes it's the, it's the fact that they don't even know that vehicle is out there. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, you know, so if we lift up that awareness, then, <clears throat> then that individual probably would have uh, given to some local organization in Corbin. So, I mean, that I, I really took to heart when Mr. Ashley said lots of people didn't give because they weren't asked. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think that we do assume, you know, and that somebody has, you know, they've already got a plan or whatever. So, I, I mean, all they can do is say no. And, you know, even if they said no, um, you planted a seed Exactly. That not even if it's not for your community, again, if we're really in this to improve our community mm -hmm. and we caused someone to think about giving, even if it wasn't to our community foundation, if they decided, you know, it is time, I need to start thinking about that. And I really think that all of my money should go here. Um, that's perfectly fine too, you know, yeah. unless it's the American Heart Association <laughs> and, and we never see yeah, anything, but, but no, I, but yeah, yeah. the, the, the yeah. being able to track the local impact of some of those is a little difficult. So, I mean, it's all still worth it. And, and again, yeah. he even made the comment that you make uh, resources available to these folks that even if it's not benefiting your uh, foundation directly or your organization directly, that you're still, you know, uh, being a good neighbor to them and helping them connect with whatever they need to. So I, I think it's, I think it could be a win-win even if they said no, if, uh, if they started thinking about it and decided mm -hmm. to, to do something anyhow with somebody else. Yeah. I think a big aspect of it too, going back to, you know, donating to larger organizations is people want to get the biggest bang for their buck with the donation. And I think there's a mindset of, oh, this is a huge organization. I can have a huge impact with my money when it can really be the opposite. You know, exactly. if you're donating a certain amount to the American Heart Association, that could be a drop in the bucket to them versus donating to your hometown that could have some, some real impact. And mm -hmm. so if we can sell it that way, yeah. Well, we have all seen those graphics, those uh, articles about the big folks. Uh, I guess the Salvation Army is one of the exceptions where there's so much of the money that goes into the administration of the organization and not nearly enough money goes to the boots on the ground, whether that, whatever that means, whatever that is. And so um, that's something interesting. I wonder if... Um, you know, I think we need to be maybe prepared or ready to make some statements like that, um, that, you know, your gift, you know, it's not going to pay the CEOs or the, the executive director salary. I mean, yes, we know that there's some admin fees and, and that's part of it, but, but those admin fees are not uh, egregious. 
and, and we could talk about how the majority of the money is going to go straight to the cause mm -hmm. um, and straight to the impact. So mm -hmm. I think that that's another important selling point, um, you know, that might make it a little bit more attractive to stay yeah. local. So as Sandy was telling her, you know, saying, talking about the story aspect of this and how I don't really have a specific story, a question kind of came to mind for me that um, if you, you know, and I know that you all, because some of the grants are small and you don't want to have to burden your grant recipients with reporting per se, but what if you call a grant recipient and just ask them the question, what happened that would not have happened without our support? Uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah. And then be able to talk about that. Yeah. Because I, I would think that there are things that, that that organization that you funded was able to do. Maybe they could serve three more kids or, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, re uh, reach out to so many other additional people. Um, and what did that do for those three more kids that would have missed out on this service if we, you know, hadn't, hadn't had this money? Yeah. I mean, after our, our strategic planning, again, thank you, Donna, uh, you know, one of the things we were just, you know, what do we want to use as an outcome? And we were just like lives touched. And if we can make a grant recipient and just say, we want to know how many lives did you touch? And we want a good story, you know, mm -hmm. you, a, a good real story, you know, uh, where you change the names, but it's still a real story. And I mean, that's it. That's all you get, you know, that's all we ask uh, yeah, uh, for in exchange for this, uh, this grant. Uh, plus we want to, and we want your assurance that you matched it in accordance to what we, you know, that's, you know, right. but right. even Detail. that, even Detail. that we may not look under the hood for, you know, so. Yeah. And with this donor development, I mean, you know, the statistical data of how many were served are is probably somewhat important, but it feels like that human interest kind of heartwarming story oh, yeah. is what is really critical. And we, Kevin and I at home talk about the glitch in the matrix, you know, how there's things that pop up and it pops up and it pops up and it pops up. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in Mr. Ashley's webinar, you know, he was talking about those little 30 second videos mm -hmm. and how those can be like a really good pitch. Well, Last night I was on the, we're, we're planning for the Rotary Foundation dinner that's going to be taking place in June. And it's a regional thing. It's basically everything that is east of uh, uh, Interstate 64, all the clubs. And we started talking about how we needed those little 30 second videos, you know, because we want to be able to share those. Once again, you know, now we're here, we're talking about, you know, having a little, you know, some kind of blurb. Um, I do think that we need to start recording those in some form. I think we need to have quotes uh, ready to go. I think that we need to have little videos. You know, one of the things that we could do, you're talking about that inside information, um, is you get some of these little blurbs, these little videos, 30 second videos of, you know, somebody standing in front of the playground that, you know, we maybe helped fund or something. And, and that goes out to some funders as a first glimpse of, hey, you know, we just got this, you know, let me share, you know, look at this cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a thousand ways that we can use that. But our foundation, I feel we have, we've not at all done a good job with following up and figuring out what that impact was, whether it was on paper in an actual report or whether it was a story or a mm -hmm. testimonial or something. So, and, and I know we need the reports, but I also think the testimonials and uh, other things are, are as equally as important. And I would love to be able to share those with a donor, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that we've talked about this and Kathy, you and Bobby are on here. I know you guys are still working on kind of developing that new brand, but I still think from a donor perspective that we need to help them understand what the community foundation is and that yeah. little cartoony video that I keep talking about <laughs> we need to have some kind of little three minute something we, that yeah. helps open that conversation to say this is what this is about um, and then lend it into that more meaningful personal conversation but I, you know people have got to know that it's bigger than the playground or bigger than the art station or whatever it is that we're getting ready to do, that this is something perpetual that will impact multiple generations. So 
I don't know if you guys can speak to that as far as where you guys are in that process or how that's coming along. Um, Kathy, we are we are doing the videos, correct? That that's is happening. Just, Laura yeah. had reached out. I thought she said to Robert Guy uh, to help. Mm to do though that's oh that's, i love robert got stuff i love his drawings I, yeah. I love his drawings he's so, so that's all i know <laughs> yeah yeah and that's, now, and we now would it's have... on recording so now everybody <laughs> but that's what she had made a comment he's committed on. now oh there no. you go he's committed no, 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 he's no, no, no. committed just, he's he's gonna do it it's on youtube now right. so he yeah. has to come <laughs> yeah. so go go back and and daniel you need to go back and bleep that <laughs> have to figure out how to bleep on a YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But but I think that that is part of this donor development is mm -hmm. there there is an education piece to all of this, and um, I know we have to have personal meaningful conversations, and I know that what I would consider to be low hanging fruit may be easy to just have a conversation and say, hey, you know, and they, they look at you and go, hey, if you believe in it, then I believe in it. But, but that's only going to go so far. And, and yeah. when, we, when we pass that low-hanging fruit, then, then we really need to make sure that folks are understanding the mission and the impact. And, and I just think we need those materials to go along with that mm -hmm. um, to help sell that. Yeah. Because if you remember, I mean, one of the top things that he talked about at the, in that list of what works to connect with donors is that relationship with the with the organization. And um, it, it's going to be much harder to walk up to somebody cold, even if it's, you know, you identify these folks that are single in the community, don't have children, and you, but they have a passion and they've been working in some mm -hmm. area, but they've never heard about the community foundation. I don't think you're going to go next week and talk to them and say, right. oh, let's talk about planned giving. But you know, you mm -hmm. build that relationship a little bit. Um, yeah. And then and eventually, also, yeah, move into also, blended giving. Yeah. I wanted to mention about building the relationship with our uh, financial advisors as well as uh, the attorneys, because a lot of times the individuals are going to those uh, places to, to, you know, to, they're going to, to write their will. They're having them to, uh, and so you want to make sure that you have a relationship also with those individuals, those local individuals, mm -hmm. and that that uh, I think that'll make a real difference as well. Yeah. I know that Kristen, we just recently had our taxes done, and and Chris Gooch is our CPA, and so Chris was I was telling him that I um, uh, was talking about the um, the credit on the state tax return, and he knew all about that. And he was like, this is what you need to do. You need to go, you got to go out there and you got to fill out this form and you know, you, you, all this kind of stuff. Well, Kristen was real pleased about that. You know, she was like, oh, that's good to know that yeah. Chris knows so that whenever yeah. he's, you know, talking to his, you know, of course he's not a financial advisor, but nonetheless, you know, right. he, he is in the know. And so, mm -hmm. and I know he's a past board member, but nonetheless, you know, I, I still think that it, it was good that he knew and knew how to direct me on that yeah. so yeah. because I wasn't aware that there were special forms and that there was this kind process. of <laughs> kind of arduous process to be yeah. honest yeah um it, it's just a little bit of a deterrent if you want to know the truth yeah don't I make think, it easy uh, I think mm -hmm. down no Kentucky, they don't no they yeah. don't I mean it, it was it was out there to increase uh you know philanthropy and giving in the state of Kentucky but yet they've made it a little bit difficult to the process mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and yeah so that's a little bit discouraging well <laughs> yeah. you just got to remember where the money goes if you don't give it to an heir or to a philanthropy or charity it goes to the state so Preach. why to be all excited about making that easy yeah, right? yeah. I, yeah that's like sure, us trying sure. to make it easy to somebody to get into our checking account you know that's right no I agree with you I agree with you mm -hmm. but uh but nonetheless I, I think that um I'm just glad that we're having these conversations and these webinars uh because I this is all new stuff for me mm -hmm. and and I'm and, and our foundation has not been doing this work. And we're still not doing this work, but boy, oh, I keep thinking every month we're inching closer, but. Yes. Um, well, we do hope that planning process will help with that. 
uh -huh. <laughs> to some extent to give. I, I, I believe that it ways is to talk about this. Um, but then let's let's because we are a small but mighty group here today. And so um, how what are some ways that you as board members might be able to take this back to your to your boards? Um, do you think you could have a similar conversation with those questions that we went through with them? You know, think about a person, a person, a person. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. Now, I will I will just flat out tell you that the Upper Cumberland Executive Committee, we talked about this and we were just like, guys, it's hard enough as it is, and even though Mr. Asher says, don't let COVID stop you, we haven't started it, and so we're like, we just really need to have the maximum comfort possible, and so we just need to be able to meet people face-to-face -face without six feet measured between us and those types of things, um, and so if we miss our goal this year, then then we might. Uh, hopefully, by the fall, we'll be able to get in there. Uh, but Sandy, we did what kind of goal have you set? Three per uh, three conversations per board member per year, which is actually exceeds what he had recommended uh, with regard to just one. Uh, but you know, you said uh, we just put a stake in the ground. So if it becomes unbearable, we can always back away from it. But that was that was our goal, and it wasn't that we were going to have three successful conversations. You know, where that right. resulted in a check or something. It was just going to be that every single board member committed to having over a year three of these conversations or three different conversations. You know, and um, and so I think that that I think that this is this is a uh, really good. To be real honest with you, I don't think this is a group conversation. I think this is a one on one mentorship or coaching training. OK, mm -hmm. and I think we have to get I think we have to get at least one or two board members that are very comfortable with this to hold the hands of those that aren't mm -hmm. and just get out there and jump in and start having these conversations uh, and telling people, you know, hey, this is the first time I've ever done this. I hope you'll bear with me, you know, and those types of things. But just uh, and to go out in pairs rather than yep. one on one. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think that not that I'm uncomfortable having the conversations one on one with people I have close relationships with, but I think it gives a professionalism uh, to the idea. Uh, if you if you're like, you know, hey, there's two of us that want to talk. You know, it's not just me. Uh, yeah. Now you can have, uh, I think, like, for example, the person that I played with in my uh, work, work here, you know, I may, I may one on one ask for a coffee meeting with him and his wife, and can I bring so and so, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and do that one on one, but I do think this uh, that pairs are, are, are a good way uh, yeah. to be able to do that. Um, and, uh, and pairs that have uh, kind of rehearsed um, their, what they want to say and how they want to say it yeah. um, and, uh, and go from there. Um, you know, do we need to wait until we have little pieces of paper to hand to them as well? You know, honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, once you have the piece of paper and it's all figured out, then you got, you know, then it's like, well, have you sent me my box yet? And did I get my box to the right, you know, those types of things. That's uh -huh. uh, to me, it's always, to me, I'd, I'd rather have that personal conversation and say, you know, may I mail you this packet uh, as a follow-up or something like that uh -huh. rather than having, but, you know, uh, again, I understand people that, you know, it, it's, um, it's like a crutch you know, it's like, I've got this piece of paper and we can walk through it and I don't have to remember what I want to say. You know, I mean, it goes both ways. I, I can see it either way. Um, so. Well, I know in some of our earlier um, fundraising conversations and donor development conversations, we talked about how the um, foundation staff are sometimes available to go out with folks. So mm -hmm. do you all want to say anything more about that, Kathy or Bobby? And Oh, my phone. Sorry, start when I unmuted. <laughs> we are anytime anybody would like somebody from the uh, foundation to go with them. I mean, we can set that up. Uh, sometimes that's a positive and sometimes maybe not if it's somebody local. So yeah, it's uh -huh, just right. uh, the affiliates call on whether that you think that uh, that would be a good uh, person to join the meeting. Sure. 
And see, to me, that's, to me, it's that second meeting when you, when one pulls you guys in, you know, it's like, you know, they've got this car or this house that they want to get rid of, you know, and they want to include it or, or do that sort of right. thing. You know, can you all bring in that level of expertise or yes. they want to, or they want to learn more about the tax credits. Can you bring in more of that expertise? Yes. Um, and, uh, and to me, that's, to me, that's when the, the, it works the best, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, other people I, I, may I not. think it's an individual situation. Everyone exactly. is, is an individual situation and you'll have to, um, just kind of make that call for, for every sure. person. Sure. Melissa, does the Perry County Foundation have someone on the board that's willing to join every single person who wants to go out as a pair? We haven't got that far, Sandy. Um, okay. so, so where, so our, I'll tell you as close as we've gotten is to have it on the agenda as an item that we didn't get to. Okay. So, so <laughs> what, what, what our problem is, is there, there's been a lot of, in, in, I mean, there's always important work, but there really has been some, some business that we've been having to take care of. And what I didn't want to do when we, when we talked about this is, is to have the, this discussion as a an agenda item i feel that we need to dedicate and i don't know bobby if we have anything on the agenda for our next upcoming meeting but you know we talked Too about much. well then let's don't so because what so because part of the things that happen to us is we get donation requests we get sponsorship requests we get grant requests and and some of those things we really have to talk out so then you know so anyhow I would like to not have anything on the agenda and and send um, some kind of prep something um, and just say, let's have this conversation because we have not gotten far enough to say, I, I personally feel, com I have done this work before and I personally feel very comfortable in being able to have conversations. The catch is as, as, Kathy mentioned that you know not every person should talk to every person <laughs> you know sure. we, we all know that some people maybe should avoid certain people or that you know it's better served to have you know somebody else talk to that person but but I am comfortable with that you know when I worked at the senior center I made personal visits you know all before our big radio day fundraiser uh, go and tried to go into it with a sizable amount of donations before we even started. So I, I, I kind of know how to, to do that and would feel comfortable doing that. Now I've got some other folks. We have some other folks, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking of one person in particular who she thinks that she's not comfortable. Yeah. I think that she could have a conversation going yeah. out with two, like you say, yeah. and she would be very com comfortable having a conversation with that person. It's uh -huh. just the same thing about, I just don't know how, I don't know if I can ask somebody for a mm -hmm. bunch of money, you know. It's the asking but, for money piece that people are. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think that she's comfortable enough and she knows people. And sometimes that's what it takes is to have them help open the door for you mm -hmm, and yeah. just kind of ease into the conversation. So I know that's yeah. how I started at the senior center is there was a lady who, who always asked for the money and she went out with me and just kind of paved that conversation. So, yeah. And, and sometimes it's just that you're planting the seed. Uh, yeah. Maybe they're yeah. not ready to talk about it just yet, mm -hmm. but that's right. that's when, when right. they are, they know it's, it's an, it's an avenue to, to use to bring back local uh, money for good causes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys have an open grant season at Perry County Community Foundation? Well, kind of. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, well, don't don't know. Money. Don't know <laughs> that it's going to stay that way, though. Don't know that it's going to stay that way. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Uh, what we talked about in our last strategic, well, what is in our strategic plan is that we want, again, to be a little bit, um, instead of passive, we want to really kind of take control of a little bit and say, these are our interests. And so unsolicited, we're going to maybe pick out two or three projects that we want to get behind mm -hmm. and that we are going to make, you know, somewhat sizable donations, what we consider to be sizable to those causes. And those causes may change every year. I hope 
I kind of hope they do, um, but it's still under the same umbrella, but you know what I'm saying? It, it mm-hmm. might be here and then, and then, and then we will have an opportunity then to continue to receive sponsorship request and to receive grant request. So we can do a little bit of both, but I, I, I guess the, the biggest change that I feel like our strategic plan is doing for us is is putting us a little bit more in the driver's seat Mm -hmm. because we really we really have approached this work very passively we kind of show up and we see if anybody's asked for anything and then we kind of talk about it (laughs) and 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 we really we're really looking at that a little bit differently which is also making us mindful of We also need to be in the driver's seat when it comes to donor development. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm going to be very honest. You know, we have been very blessed with someone who has given us some money and has helped us do that, that initial kind of laying of the foundation. But what that has done to us is it's made us lazy and it's made us kind of sit back and just enjoy whatever comes in and not work for anything more or extra. And I think that that we're not being good board members by taking that approach. I think Mm -hmm. that we have a fiduciary responsibility to continue to grow that rather than just kind of rest on our on on someone else's work and just say, yeah, you know, we're, we're great. We're great. You know, we give away some money every year and we're great because I think that that's really all. And I'm not being critical. Yeah. What I'm saying is that sometimes if you've got, oh, I don't know, I don't know, other people may think differently about it, but it, we had the, um, we had the opportunity to be lazy. Mm-hmm. So I think that if we not had the opportunity to be lazy, we might have had a little bit of a different culture. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, but, but folks are on board. It's not that anybody's reticent. I'm not, we're not, it's the best of my knowledge, at least they're not saying it, they're not saying it openly. Um, that nobody is is not in agreement that we need to to t- take an additional direction or a different direction. Everybody's good yeah. with that, but yeah. we've just kind of we've just kind of coasted for a while. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's one o'clock. Well, I know. Well, we're at one o'clock now, and um, I think ending on that actually re- reinforces the idea of narrative because I think that's what's coming out of these strategic plans is the narrative, which will lead to that storytelling that you all can do as part of your donor development. And so. I do hope this was helpful today. Um, Just keep in mind as you know, you do contact or think about contacting donors that there will be processes with the foundation in terms of that. So check in with the foundation. I'm saying that for the folks who are listening to the recording as much as for the folks who are on the recording. So um, thank you all and any last thoughts, yeah. Well, and we may encourage before the each affiliate talks about Thanksgiving to go and watch the videos, especially the Jeff yeah. Ashley one and yeah. perhaps this one as well. And yeah. so everybody can kind of be up to speed on, on uh, kind of where, what we've discussed. So. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, the other, the last little comment I'll make, and this will be on the recording, but that's okay, is that I think what Brushy Fork would like to do is make some phone calls to people to find out how we might increase the number of folks who are participating in these webinars. And I just wanted to very quickly see if anybody had any thoughts about our approach to that. If we, just to try to get people engaged. Um, I don't know, think I think the, it's fabulous. I, I mean, I really have found them very helpful. I mm-hmm. was very regretful that I couldn't join when when Mr. Ashley gave his presentation. I had to, to listen yeah. to the webinar, but yeah. I find these incredibly helpful. How do you I, I, I yeah. think part of the problem, and I know we're over on time, is yeah, that sorry. sometimes these, our our participation with like these boards and things is, is, is very um, insulated and it's very self-contained and it's hard for us to kind of step out and say, okay, as a part of that, we need to do these other things. I mm-hmm. think it's like, well, I show up for the meetings, yeah. you know, and so yeah. it's, it's yeah. kind of hard to, to, mm-hmm. to get folks to think, mm-hmm. you know, well, know. So when you have people who don't show up for the meetings, you know, and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that never gonna, happens. That never happens in Perry <laughs> County. I don't know what you're talking about. Sandy. I know, I, I know. It's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, uh, 
but oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, uh, you know, again, and, and it's just, I think that's a part of the whole brushy forks need in our area and leadership development in that we learn that we we need more leaders because we spread the ones we have so thinly. That's a true you know, statement. Uh, that, yeah. they're, that they're not able to not only attend, but they're not able to develop, they're not able to grow because there's just not enough hours in the day. So, And, but, and yeah. I know some folks would have been here. I was on earlier meetings with some of the people that could have been here. So I know that there are, as Sandy said, there are people that are legitimately busy, but mm -hmm. then there are other folks that are like, eh, you know, I'll just show up on you know, the first Monday of the month and you know, do my thing or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you need a quorum. Okay. Count me in. Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I'll throw so, out, I'll, I know there's one more thing, but I was just going to say, if you were ever able to create a financial incentive, okay. Cause every board member is challenged to make a financial donation every single year to their community foundation and the amount doesn't matter. But if you came along and said, earn a $10 donation to your community <laughs> foundation. <laughs> yeah. Just be so yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 If we could no. figure out how to, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, you know, yeah. put an incentive in there, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, you know, um, uh, and then uh, we could use the idea of matching your earned uh, contribution and, uh, and so forth. So, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, well, just we're just, all righty, okay. well, I appreciate that. Um, we, I just, I threw that in at the last minute, but um, uh, yeah, we'll. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> all all right. right. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Okay.